Hey, it's Jimmy with Switcher Studio. I'm back here again with a quick overview of how you can customize dynamic templates to create graphics for your video. I'm gonna just walk you through different ways that you can make use of them, how you can change the colors on them, how you can add drop shadows in some cases. You can really take them to the next level. We're gonna do that right now. All right, so if you haven't done it already, you definitely need to go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you're not already there, it's youtube.com slash switcher studio. You're gonna get notifications every time we come out with cool videos like this, so please just go ahead and do that now. Just hit subscribe and hit the bell. You'll get notified. You'll know when our videos are coming out. It's a really great thing to do. So when you first launch Switcher, you actually start off with a dynamic template actually preloaded in the sources panel. So if you tap on that text overlay there, you'll see it says, welcome to the show. And I'm gonna show you right now today how to add this one uh, and also how to adjust different ones. We're just gonna go through those today and just look at different ways that you can customize these templates. So let's dive into those and check them out right now. So to add dynamic templates, it's really easy. You just start off by hitting the plus button in the bottom and you'll see if you scroll down, there's an option that says dynamic templates. Uh, there's a couple different varieties. We've got titles, lower thirds, social overlays and broadcast notifications. And these are just subsets of different templates that we've created. You can choose and browse through all of these to see the different types that we have. And each of them has some different options that allow you to customize them to look the way that you want. So let's start off just by looking at titles, for example. So one of the most powerful titles is actually the second one here that just says your text here. Um, so let's start by just viewing this one and let's look at the different options that we have here. So first of all, you've got a text area. So what's cool about this text area is it's actually multiple lines. So if you wanted to put multiple lines of text, um, you can put more lines here. Um, you can also change the size of this box and the text that's in it. So you can change it to, to fit the size that you need. You've also got a text alignment option. This especially comes in handy if you've got multiple lines. So if you really want this to sort of like be growing out of the right side, you can justify to the right, but you can go either way with this. Um, you can also change the font pretty easily here as well. So I'll look at this one called Avenir Next. Um, this has several different font styles that you can choose from. I'm gonna choose this one at the bottom that it says heavy italic. And so now that I've set that, so now my text is gonna be reflecting this heavy italic kind of look. You've also got the option to kind of toggle on the italic or the bold for that so you can further customize what you want that to look like depending on the font that you choose. So here's where it gets interesting. You can change the color of the text, the color of the box that's holding the text, and the color of the background of the screen. In addition to those colors, you can actually control the transparency of all of those different things. So for example, if you wanted the text to be slightly transparent, you can just pull the transparency down. That means anything behind it will be visible. Um, and now if I take this background transparency, it'll change the color of the box. So now anything behind that box will be slightly visible. And then also you've got the dimming level, which is the very, very back of the entire screen that's gonna dim everything behind it. You can take that all the way down if you want. So in fact, you could make it so you just have uh, text only with no box around it and no background color. Um, you can change the color of that text to be white so maybe it stands out a little bit more. Um, we can shrink that down with a pinch and we can move it over here. There are even more options inside this. You've actually got a line spacing option so that if you've got multiple lines on this one, you can increase the space between the lines. Um, if you do have the box showing, uh, you can increase the horizontal padding to make the box a little bigger or change the vertical padding. You can also rotate this with the orientation control. So you can actually have this kind of uh, at an angle or sort of offset. Um, this can look cool if you wanna put it up in the corner as a banner and now we'll just increase our like horizontal padding and now we've got this sort of like label across the corner at the top that looks kind of cool. I'm gonna make the text stand out a little bit more. Let's make it something kind of orange. All right, and when you're done with that, you just choose done, and now you've got your own custom text overlay that you've created from the dynamic templates. All right, this one looks all right. Let's go look at another one. So to add another one, again, you just hit the plus button, and now let's go look at the different lower thirds. So if I look at these, we've got some pre-made templates for you that you might like, um, and they all have different controls for them. Let's just look at the first one, for example. So here we've got the title and a subtitle. You can change the color of the text in the title, but you can also change the color of the box that's around it, and you can change the color of the subtitle text in the box around that as well. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna try to customize this a little bit more. 
So I'm gonna adjust the colors of this one, but in the meantime, I'm gonna tell you about the color picker. So this color picker is basically an HSL color picker, which stands for hue, saturation, and luminance. So there's a slider at the bottom. It's kind of a brightness or luminance slider. And all the way on the left side, you've got black. And all the way on the right side, you've got white. So it's really how dark or how light your color is gonna be. And then in the circle, you've got hues that go around the circle. And then depending on how far you are from the center is your saturation. So if you're all the way in the middle, it's going to be very desaturated or dull and very neutral looking. And then as you move out to the edges, you're going to get a much higher saturation in color that's going to seem more rich and much more uh, different from a plain gray or plain white. So I'm going to try to pick a brighter color that is more saturated for my background color. So I'm gonna move this out to the brighter colors to begin with, and then to make it more saturated, I'm gonna move the point from the middle out to something kind of like, I don't know, let's go towards this blue. So now you can see the color at the very top bar is gonna change and it'll indicate with a hexadecimal color code exactly what color you're on. So I'm gonna be okay with this blue for now, so let's start with that and just go back. But I'm gonna change the title color to be a darker color. So now I've got pure white in the middle, but I want to be something black and I want it to be desaturated. Well, I'm gonna leave the point right in the middle and then I'm just gonna take the brightness slider or the luminance slider and I'm gonna take that down to be something really close to black. So let's try something like 30. All right, so now I've got a blue and I've got a good contrasting color uh, right on top of it that's not quite black and it's kind of like a really, really dark gray. So now I've got a good contrast between these colors. Pro tip, don't ever go all the way to black on your color selector if you can help it. Just go slightly above black whenever you're picking your colors. Whenever you're doing video, there's often times where you're gonna end up with black pixels on the screen or all the way white pixels on the screen just because of contrast, maybe the sun or the light's gonna change. As long as you don't pick a pure black or a pure white color in your graphics, you're gonna make sure that your graphics will always sort of stand out against those really deep colors that your camera is going to be picking up. So if you can help it, avoid going all the way to black with this color picker and avoid going all the way to white if you can help it. Just try to pick colors that are not at the extremes of the brightness. If you find somewhere in the middle, you can't go wrong. All right, and now that blue and orange aren't really working for me right now. So even though they're complementary colors, I kind of want to find something else. So I'm going to go pick the orange and I'm going to try to find something that's a little closer to like maybe a yellow for what I'm doing here. Make it a little bit darker. Um, so I've got the yellow. That white and yellow is not working well together, so now I'm gonna change the subtitle color and make that back down to something close to that kind of gray or dark black. And there we go, so now I've got a customized uh, lower third and I made sure that there's a good contrast between the text and the box so that I can read it really well. With this one, you can move it around as well. You can pinch to scale it also. If you ever wanna preview what these are gonna look like when they're triggered live, before you commit to them, you can just hit the play button at the top. So it'll indicate this is what happens as it leaves the screen, and then here's what it looks like as it enters the screen. It just gives you a good preview of what everything's gonna look like whenever you eventually use it in your production. All right, let's build some more. So again, we just go into our plus button menu with the assets, and we're gonna choose some more lower thirds. Um, let's look at this one called Emma Smith. So with this one, you've got a title and subtitle again, but now you've got options to control the size of the title specifically or the subtitle specifically. You can also set a style on the title or the subtitle to kind of differentiate them. So if you want the subtitle to have like italics to it, uh, you can change that. And you can also adjust the font and the subtitle font. And just like the other ones, you can move this around to different places on the screen just by dragging with one finger so you can place it where you want. There's also a setting on this particular one called adjust alignment. And what it'll do is it'll change the alignment from aligning to the right and instead it'll align to the left. So if we toggle that on, you get an idea of what that looks like. This one also has a shadow transparency option that's not common for all of the different templates that we have. The drop shadow definitely comes in handy if you're shooting something out in the sunlight and there's gonna be a lot of bright pixels everywhere and you've got this overlay with the text set to white. You might encounter a problem where you've got really bright pixels on the screen in your picture and then you've got this sort of white overlay in the view and it can cause some problems. So for example, if this is where I put the graphic, like the letters are just kind of getting lost behind the other white pixels that are on the screen. So like the only way you can see what it says is if my hands are in the way. So now if I have a drop shadow on there, 
um, I can make that stand out from the background so that it looks better and it's easier to differentiate what's in front or what's behind. It's gonna make your titles look better when they're on the screen. And it's just like a little touch you can add to this graphic to make it look cool. All right, so let's go in here and look at one more. So let's go down here to the lower thirds and uh, we've got this one right here. So with this one again, we've got a title and subtitle that you can adjust. Um, you can also change the font or the typeface that you wanna use for these. There's also a background color. So let's preview and see what this looks like. So if we hit the play button, you can see there's three boxes that appear on the screen. And whenever it animates on and off, it kind of has those boxes appearing in and sliding out. So we can change the color of that if we'd like. If you'd rather go down to something kind of like black, gotcha, never go all the way to black. Just keep it right above it if you can. So let's go to something kind of like this gray right in here. And you can also change the transparency of that if you'd like. So you can crank that up so that those boxes completely obscure the background and they don't let anything be seen through it. Here, in fact, I'll add a little bit of color to this. So let's make it kind of like a, let's make it like a green, sort of like a foresty green. Yeah, there we go. So now I've got this green color and I'll take the transparency down. Um, so let's see what that looks like on the screen. So here you are. So there's an option that you can have as well, a very neutral option for having um, a lower third on the screen. And then whenever you want, you just tap on it again. It disappears, animates out nicely. How about that? So quickly, let's go look at these social overlays. So if you've got different social handles like Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, LinkedIn, even Instagram, you wanna put your handles on the screen to let people know how to get to you. So for example, um, I definitely want people to go check out our YouTube. So I'm gonna put in a way to find us on YouTube, which is to go to Switcher Studio. We're at Switcher Studio on YouTube. So what you can do is you can scale the text if you have a really long handle, or you can scale all, which will take the entire shape and shrink it down if you need to. You can also scale that with like a two finger pinch. So if you grab the screen with two fingers, you can move it like that. You can also take one finger and grab the screen and move this wherever you need. So one option would be to sort of stack a couple of these on one side of the screen if you'd like. Um, so I'll put that Switcher Studio right there. And then now that that's sitting there, whenever I put something on the screen like say that one, it won't be in the way, but you've also got the social hanging out right here so that it's always on the screen and I can still bring in my other lower thirds and it's not gonna interfere with them. That's gonna sit there and be fine. Also something like this one is gonna be fine as well, but I can kind of keep this here the whole time. Um, you can add some other ones too if you'd like. So let's say I wanted to send you to our Facebook page. I would say make sure you go check out Switcher Studio Enthusiast. I can bring that text size down so that it fits into the box. So what I can also do is sort of situate this off right above the YouTube option to the right of the screen. All right, so now I've got that on the screen as well. So I've got these different sort of lower thirds um, over here that maybe can stay static. And then I've got another set over here that can kind of move around and be entering and leaving whenever I need. All right, so that's just a couple of different ways that you can customize the dynamic templates in Switcher Studio. Hey, of course, go check out Switcher Studio Enthusiasts, our Facebook user group. Um, you can see a lot of great examples in there. You can join the enthusiasts, you can post in there as well, put hashtag made with Switcher. Tell us how you're using dynamic templates. We'd love to hear about it. Hey, thanks for checking out this video. And remember, we're always here to help. So if you need anything, let us know at support at switcherstudio.com.